My name is Matthew Holmes. I'm a writer, director and producer. I have my own production company called Two Tone Pictures and um, I'm currently developing uh, feature film content and that's where you know, my goal is to get, get into. Ben Hall uh, has gone in a, in a direction that I didn't expect when I first started. I started the project as, uh, as a short film and uh, wanting, looking for something to do uh, to keep me busy in, um, throughout 2014 as I was waiting to finance another feature. And, but I knew it, I was, if I was going to spend the time spending six months making a short film, I wanted it to be something that interests me um, to maintain, you know, because of all the effort that it is to make a short. And, you know, ultimately it, it, a short film just becomes something for film festivals. You can't make money from it or anything. It just becomes an exercise. So I wanted it to be something that was you know, something I was very passionate about. So I instantly thought, well, why not Ben Hall? Why don't I do a, a scene from Ben Hall? Now, the reason uh, for that is because I have this really big interest in um, the, uh, the history of Ben Hall and uh, I'd spent many years writing a feature length script on Ben Hall. And uh, so I thought, why don't I just take one little section of that and um, like the end section and just make a little 10 minute um, film about that little, and could I achieve that? So I ran some numbers and, and um, on a bit of a budget and figured out how I could do this. And I thought, you know what, I think I know the right people here in Melbourne. I reckon I could pull this off just. Um, and of course, then the idea came, well, what about um, Kickstarter, crowdfunding? You know, because it'll, it'll have some expenses and, and I can't cover that with out of my own pocket. So uh, I just jumped onto Kickstarter and started researching how it all works and what makes a successful Kickstarter film and so on. And uh, then after doing that, I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm going to be really bold and I'm just going to go for 75,000, you know, to see if I can raise 75,000, make it 25 minutes, make it, you know, big enough to, you know, so people might want to get behind it. Because I thought that, you know, people might really, uh, we haven't seen a Ben Hall film in, in, in decades. So I thought people might really love this. So yeah, I put together the, the pitch for it and uh, yeah, we ended up, um, not only getting our 75, but exceeding it and going up to 114. So uh, that allowed me to uh, expand the film bigger than what I was originally going to do and make it um, over half an hour, closer to a TV hour. So it had that potential of um, once we're finished, it, you know, it could be sold as a, as a one hour special on TV. It was filmed around um, August and September. And because most of it was regional, um, the weather was quite extreme at that time. There was still, we were still getting snow and stuff up there. So the places we wanted to build sets were in like that much water and things like that. So we just couldn't, we couldn't build. Um, so we knew, so we shot three weeks and we knew we were going to come back at some stage soon after and shoot the fourth week and finish off, which was probably about a 45 minute movie actually in the end. Um, so, you know, it could, it, could, it could fill out the TV hour once you throw in some ads and so on. And, um, but it was while we were filming and when we were getting dailies back and, and so on that we were looking at what we were create, what we were making and everyone's feeling was, this is looking really cool. This should really be a feature film. And it was almost, it was always my goal to make a feature film of Ben Hall. I thought that what would happen is if I could make this really strong short film of Ben Hall, I could then, um, take that to somebody and go, look at this content, look how cool it looks. Uh, I've got a feature script here about this um, and look what I can do. So let's get, let's go make the big, you know, let's go make the big movie. So the, the, I was hoping that one day the short would spark off the feature. Um, what I didn't expect is that after filming and cutting a little trailer together and, and rushes and so on, is that people would, uh, would start going, no, this should be the feature, what you're doing right now. Let's make this the feature. So that was the big surprise um, for, sort of for everybody. Um, and that seemed to be where, and I, I did have a resistance to it because I was like, oh, no, it's going to be too hard, be, be, be hard to do that. Um, and uh, but there was a you know there was a strong uh, pull towards that, and uh, a company I've been working with, Odin's Eye Entertainment, out of Sydney, uh, they saw when they saw the trailer and the and the stills and everything, they immediately were like, we know we can sell this as a feature. Let's figure out what we need to raise. Let's rewrite the script into feature. Let's adapt what you've done already into a feature, and then we'll um, uh, we'll go out and we'll finance that. And then we'll and we'll go and we'll do it. So 
suddenly all these actors and crew that were working on a short film have now thrown, like me, have found themselves thrown into a feature. So uh, it's it's all sort of been continually growing, almost out of my control in one sense. We funded the short um, with with the Kickstarter money, yeah. um, but um, it really soaked up that money really fast and pretty much drained it dry. Um, so what we what we decided we would do is we would, you know, rewrite, rewrite the script, rebudget, reschedule, um, and then um, go out to the marketplace and say, you know, we've got this feature here. Here you can see what it's going to look like, and try to raise um, private investment, a little bit extra crowdfunding, which we did, and um, to try to, uh, and also to see if we can pre-sell the film as well, and and pull together enough. Um, money to to be able to go out and at least shoot the rest of the movie and get it in the can. Um, I mean, a movie like Ben Hall would normally cost millions of dollars to make because you you know it's mostly location work. You've got horses and and costumes and and sets and everything. But because of the crew that we had and and just being really smart about it and also getting people to to do things at costs they n normally wouldn't do and so on deferred payments to get everyone inspired and int interested in it, to do it, to work at that level, I, we could bring it in much, much cheaper. And it, then of course, if it sells and does well, those people then reap the rewards on the back end. So that's the kind of structure we're working under. So we've, we're trying to raise just enough money to, so we can just get it in the can. And then, then we know we've got a film and now we can, you know, exploit it. and hopefully make money and pay everyone for their work. Writing scripts, I I always loved creative writing at school, um, but being a writer was never something I aspired to be. I wanted to be a, a director, a filmmaker. Um, however, to be that, uh, I realized that nobody was gonna write my scripts for me. So I had to become a script writer um, really out of necessity, and it was something that it was um, it was a big learning curve and something I had to really force myself into doing and um, train myself. It didn't come naturally f to me to be a, a, a writer. So it was really just the passion of, it was actually the Ben Hall script that drove me to, um, to become a writer because um, I, I would have liked someone to do it for me, but I had no one to pay, I had no money to pay a writer and I had no one that was going to be that committed to the project like I was. So I had this massive task in front of me, um, write a script about Ben Hall and it's going to be really big. And so that's a huge mountain as anyone who writes feature scripts to know, it's a huge mountain to, to write a feature script and for it to be any good. So I had to just apply myself and just, it was like a discipline, just daily discipline, write, write, write. And half the problem is when do you, when do you write? So I'd find myself um, at the end of a work of a full working day, just going, "Well, I'm too tired to write. My, I've I've used I've exhausted my brain function and so on." Um, but I had this uh, because I knew there were other Ben Hall projects coming up. I knew that my film needed to my script needed to get done. So I find myself I would I would wake up at uh, four in the morning and would just write for three hours in the morning before I started getting ready for work. And that became a, an absolute discipline um, to get up at four, write for three hours before work. And what I was finding is I was, you know, I was really making progress. So, um, and on top of that, reading everything I could about um, film scripts and structures and so on. So um, I really just um, taught myself a new skill basically. And that took many years. Um, now writing a script, I, it still takes that kind of discipline, but now it comes a little bit more naturally um, because the discipline is, you know, you know, it's done its job. Um, do I write every day? Not uh, only if I'm in the process of writing, will I write every day? And usually I'll give it a good five or six hours solid writing. Um, um, but I've, I've kind of found writing, script writing is a weird process um, and every script seems to be a bit different. Um, the scripts that you struggle the most with when you find you don't know what you're writing about, you probably 
you probably shouldn't be writing it because you, you're not ready to write it yet. That's what I find. Um, the scripts where I've just turned them out so quickly is because I knew exactly what I was writing about. Um, and, and I had mapped out a plan. Um, I guess some people when they write, they, 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 they're a bit more free form. I'll go with the flow, I'll find it as I go. I've, I'm usually very methodical and very, I usually won't write until I have my complete st structure in front of me on a piece of paper. My first act, second act, third act, I know my, all my beats, my turning points and all the, all the things that have to happen and then I start, and then I'll, I know all the scenes in between and what, what every scene takes us to the next level. And then I'll write the script because I know exactly where I'm going. I'm making Ben Hall because it, it interests me. You know, I, I love it. And I expect that if I love it this much, other people will love it. I know what kind of movie I want it to be. And that's what I'm aiming for. And I love those kind of movies. And I know others do. So I'm thinking if I can marry that with that, and present it, and it's and it's successful, then surely people will will love it. We'll we'll get into it. So it's just a bit of um, I don't know, just following what I love and knowing others love it too, and just you know hoping that it works, hoping that I've pulled it off well enough. Um, so um, when in the case of Ben Hall, it's an Australian western. Um, there's not a lot of those around. We haven't seen one for a good ten years now since the proposition. Um, and even the proposition, as much as I love the proposition, that's still a very arty film in a lot of ways. It's very slow paced. It's um, it's not accessible to a mainstream audience. Um, what I'm doing with Ben Hall is I'm trying to do something that's very very accessible, very mainstream, something that people will, um, you know, that's very entertaining basically, uh, almost like what a Hollywood film would make. Um, if if Hollywood was to get hold of the Ben Hall story, this is something like they would. They, they would do with it. Um, and so that's what I've been trying to do, just make the most entertaining, fun film as possible. So I'm hoping that's what, that's what will, will come through. We ended up filming Ben Hall on a red epic and a red scarlet. Um, the, we were tossing up many, many um, options and price was going to drive the decision. Um, it was basically the best camera we could get and the best one we could afford was the driving thing behind it. Um, we were going to shoot on 5Ds at one stage, um, but we were lucky enough to have people um, with who own Scarlet's and Epics come on board the film and give it to us at like super duper price. Now we, and, and of course we just welcomed that. We're like, yay, a red, fantastic. Um, if I had all the money in the world, would I have, would I have gone for a red? Don't know, maybe not. But because this was so much, um, such a great format that we didn't even expect that we were going to get, we just we embraced embraced it. And I've really enjoyed shooting on red. I've never shot with a red before. Um, so we shot, yeah, two cameras. And um, the good thing is we got access to cinema lenses, and they made all prime cinema cinema lenses, and they made all the difference in really making a, a really really cinematic image. So, um, and of course the decision was made that, oh, okay, well, we're shooting, we're shooting with, with the reds. Let's do it in 4K and let's, um, we'll, we'll treat it as though there is this possibility that this might become something bigger one day. Or if we shoot a feature, we can integrate this footage into it, you know. So it, it was good that we did that because now that it's going bigger, we don't have to sort of refilm everything we did because we shot it at a level just in case it was going to go bigger. Directing actors, that's... Uh, my experience in directing actors has been that there is no one way to do it. Um, actors are such a varied bunch um, that um, I think I have to find... Um, you find the language for every actor um, and the way that, um, because every actor's approach is gonna be different, every role is different. Um, so, and, and the circumstances you find yourself every day working are always gonna be different. So um, I think working with actors, you just gotta be really flexible and you gotta go with the flow. And that's how I've, I find it. I, I don't try to overthink how I'm gonna direct an actor, or how I'm gonna direct a performance um, because you just you just rock up on the day and you just 
try to find it however you can. However that person, you feel that person needs to be spoken to, um, how, how, they, uh, how they respond. You know, some actors are, feel much more comfortable if you say the line very similar to how you want them to say it. Some actors really don't want to be spoken to much at all. Um, so I find there's really no, there's no really one, one rule. So, um, I just get in there and just try to find it however I can. It's a little bit like sort of stumbling around in the dark and, oh, okay, right, here we are. All right, now we're, we're getting somewhere. Um, and, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of the process, my process anyway. Yeah. Um, as far as, uh, performance, uh, as far as, um, directing actors on Ben Hall, um, again, they're all, they're all so different that um, my approach was very different to all of them and they're all at such different experience um, levels. Uh, one guy was a very, very trained actor um, and so his, um, his method was, was very, very, um, you know, he was rehearsing lines and doing voice warm-ups before the shot and, and everything and um, and he would ask me very specific questions that I you know you have to come up with the answers all of a sudden about things that he's been thinking about the character and you know and he's keeping me a bit on the edge you know what do you think was his motivation behind saying this line and you're like Ooh, okay what was his motivation you know so they but you know you answer them as best you can and and then he gives you know and his performances were really really good um, because that's how he's been trained and then you got um, another actor who was um, extremely methodical and that because he was playing a very insular, dark character, that's how he was for the entire day. He was insular, he was dark and he was off by himself and he was brooding and didn't want to be spoken too much. And then when the cameras performed, he kept that going. So, um, and then other people will just switch it on, you know. Um, an actor that I worked with on Twin Rivers was um, was very much just an actor that just switched it on, switched it off. Um, I think that's my preferred method um, to direct with because you just say to them, okay, you've got to be really upset in this scene and rah, 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 and they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, yeah, roll camera. And the minute you hit action, they just go straight into it and they are just that and then you call cut and that, they come out of it. And there's really no, um, and people that can just switch it on, switch it off, I don't know, I find that, personally, the, you know, the easiest way. But they're all different and, um, you know, it's just good fun discovering how each of them works.